Your favourite succession character probably says a lot about you. Roman's your favourite character, you probably enjoy chaos. Tom's your favourite character, you probably live for dinner parties. Logan's your favourite character, you probably like telling people to fuck off. Shiv's your favourite character. Oh, for fuck's sake, Dad, just tell him it's gonna be me. I don't know what to tell you. Get a new favorite character. But it's also hard to choose because the show acts as a confusing litmus test. Not because it's a complicated premise, a filthy rich family fight over their vast media empire. I have you beat! But because the characters are so unlikable. If I met any of these people at a party, I'd bloody hate them. They're obnoxious, rude, selfish narcissists. Everything's an angle. Every relationship is an opportunity for leverage. And while it's impossible to keep a straight face at Roman's crude comments and Connor's complete lack of awareness. I think I finally found a job I want to do. Okay, what is it? President of the United States. I'm pretty confident in saying I wouldn't have a beer with any of the main characters, but it's pretty hard not to like Greg. This is like OJ. I mean, except if OJ never killed anyone. Cousin Greg, Greg the Egg, Sporus, whatever you want to call him. I'm actually going by Gregory now. Gregory is my favorite character on my favorite TV show, and I want to tell you why. You see, Greg isn't like the rest of them. He's a distant cousin who no one really knows, he works at one of Waystar's theme parks, and he doesn't have any money. No, seriously, I'm not kidding. Ken's off waging a war against Logan for billions of dollars, and Greg can't even afford a taxi. You, need, you guys need to work this out for yourselves because basically one of you guys hasn't got $14, okay? And when we first meet this tall, bumbling doofus with no corporate skills, he's on a simple mission to convince Logan to give him his job back. It's simple but effective writing, as this means Greg acts as our audience surrogate into the world of ridiculous wealth. The implication is that he's just like us, a big, relatable, normal goofball astounded by the helicopters and lavish parties. Cleverly, this also tricks us into thinking he's the most moralistic of the bunch, someone to root for. A trick that pays off when he eventually decides to sue Greenpeace. I have some beef with Greenpeace. Uh, long story, but... They're bad. We later find out that he's actually set to inherit $250 million from his uncle Ewan, so this whole everyman shtick loses its relatability. But this makes Greg even funnier to me. Someone who's generationally wealthy but can't access their money, and they have to hang around with people saying stuff like this. Look, here's the thing about being rich, okay? It's fucking great. That is funny and makes Greg the token comic relief character. But not in an annoying way, he's not overused and it's not like Jesse Armstrong makes him repeat the same joke over and over again. I'll admit that the Tom and Greg dynamic can get a little bit grating by the end of season three, but they're not throwaway one dimensional dummies. Instead, Greg's appeal comes from the circumstances of his meteoric rise and how he seems completely different from the Roys while also exhibiting a lot of their cold blooded traits. We'll talk about his Machiavellian side soon, but we can't talk about Greg without talking about you trying to seduce me Tom <laughs> <laughs> yes I am yes I am Greg <laughs> While the siblings are busy backstabbing one another, Tom and Greg's on-again, off-again bromance is one of the only consistent alliances throughout the show. It's definitely an uneasy arrangement founded on threats and blackmail. Would it be bad for me to, like, mention those to you now? Are you asking if you can blackmail me? But they're both so outwardly ridiculous that there never seems to be any true malice there. And even when they're on opposite sides of the logan Kendall war, they still feel like kindred spirits. Which stems from the first episode when it's clear that they have more in common with each other than the rest of the Roys. They're both outsiders, with Tom regularly complaining to Greg that he's not part of Logan's inner circle. He didn't come from ridiculous wealth, and so is hell-bent on destroying anyone in his way to make it to the top, including Shiv. But he sees a lot of himself in Greg, so in a rare moment of kindness, decides to take him under his wing. When you uh, figure all this out, come in and see me. Okay. Which brings me to my favorite thing about Greg. His role as the bumbling idiot has ironically shrouded his emergence as one of the show's biggest threats. While he's probably the only character in the show who is an sociopath, Greg has been pulling the strings from the background since episode two. After ending up at the hospital when Logan has a stroke, he decides to use his time by slyly dropping into conversation that Logan gave him a new job. And he offered me a job? 
right? Which is already a bit dark, capitalizing on a dying man's inability to dispute a lie. But then he decides to play Roman and Shiv against one another, following his mum's advice. And I guess you need to decide which one of them is more important. And this one conversation seems to encapsulate the way in which Greg manipulates those around him for the rest of the show. It's a bit of a stretch to say his persona as a doofus is an act. Pleased to meet you. Likewise, Your Excellency. <laughs> but he's clearly aware that it disarms the Roys, and so he uses it to his advantage. While they continue to view him as a harmless idiot, he uses small pieces of information to go from theme park worker to whatever the hell he is now. Some upper mid-management, lo the lord of... I don't know. And it's not just seemingly harmless blackmailing of close confidants. Greg goes out of his way to find people to leverage. For example, in only three seasons, he tells Jerry about the cruise line scandal but lies to Tom when confronted about it, keeps some of the cruise line documents as an insurance policy, later uses these to blackmail both Kendall and Tom, rats out his co-workers at ATN, wears a wire to entrap Tom, pledges his allegiance to Logan but switches sides and gives Ken the cruise documents, asks Tom to take the fall, swaps from Ken back to Logan. And as Greg slowly loses his soul, his appearance changes. Once a casual mess, he's now wearing a 40 grand watch, fancy suits and combs his hair back like a corporate lackey. From the outside, he now looks like a Roy, which makes sense, right? All of his backhanded deals are dripping with self-preservation, a defensive maneuver the Roy is a world-renowned for, and he seems committed to a life of ego-driven uber-wealth. And in a lesser show, this could put a nail in the proverbial coffin with any of Greg's previous purity eradicated by his newfound status. Towards the bottom of the top. Bottom of the top. But Succession gives us hope, because despite the designer suits and his ever-growing list of depravity, Greg is still the same awkward, bumbling mess. And stay with me here, because I don't just mean, oh, he's so cute, he stumbles over his words, he must be a nice guy. I think this actually means something. As Megan Garber stated in a brilliant article from The Athletic, in the world of succession, eloquence is a sign of complicity. Greg, a malapropism incarnate, is the exception that proves the rule. In simpler terms, Greg is the only character in the show who speaks with any insecurity. Even when he's trying to be formal or fit in, he says stuff like this. Uh, if it is to be said, so it be, so it is. And in a world of supreme eloquence and self-confidence, this signals to us that no matter how embroiled he is in the Roy's world, he is not fully capitulated to it. Through Greg's imperfect language comes hope. Strong, wow, nice and strong, strong one strong for a man. And language carries incredible weight on the show. Logan lies almost too easily, long having rescinded the morals that would trip him up. Kendall is a jukebox of abbreviated corporatisms. Uh, if I get taken out on other shit, I might need you to take my cultural temperature. Shiv is more than comfortable espousing corporate platitudes, and Roman is potentially the most confident of the lot, saying what he wants, when he wants. They're not always making coherent or convincing arguments, and often rely on mixed metaphors, but they always present a confident front. Just fucking... Go nut nut. Pure excess, full bore, yeah? Even Connor believes what he's saying with the shamelessness of a true Roy. As Shiv states, The thing about us, Mark, and you should know this by now, we don't get embarrassed. By contrast, Greg gets embarrassed. He gets awkward, but this is a sign of humanity and a hint that Greg, destroyer of documents, buyer of watches, might still have some good left in him. And with a rewarding character arc punctuated by fluency like this, What's it worth? In terms of the me of it all. Why wouldn't he be my favorite character?